And welcome everybody to the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. How are all of you? It's good to see everybody watching from all around the world with our international audience. We've been doing this show for many, many months now. As you guys know, this is an extension of my professional work as a television radio personality, presenter, host, journalist, actor, writer, producer, stage MC, voiceover artist. Been doing this work professionally uh, for a long time. And we started this show back in April of last year, over 300 episodes, seven days a week live with our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series, which has a positive bent to it. As we say, it's inspiring. It's about light, love, and uh, levity. And in the summertime, when I was saying it a little too fast, we said love and levity, we said levity. And ever since I said the word levity, everybody fell in love with that word. So the viewers now from all around the world, we have an international audience. They call themselves the levities. They call me Mr. Levity. They call this Levity Hall. We are here in the greater New York area along the southern New England coast between New York and Boston in the United States, where this show originates every single day. And if you're joining us for the first time, we welcome you. It's a pleasure to have you here. We're here to inspire, entertain, have a good time. And at the same time, with our inspiring conversations, we have amazing guests and uh, some really interesting topics that we talk about. This is like an old school talk show. You may remember Mike Douglas, uh, Merv Griffin, of course, Johnny Carson, Steve Allen, Dave uh, Dick Cavett too, Dick Clark, where we spend a little time with our guests, learning about them, what makes them uh, tick, their passions, their enthusiasm, current projects as well. And of course, we have shows too, where it's just host chat and uh, viewer chat as well. Got an amazing St. Patrick's Day show coming up and tremendous guests coming up throughout the week every single day. And sometimes we even have uh, two shows a day like we do this weekend because we have a guest uh, from Ireland who's coming on at 3 p.m. Eastern, uh, a very popular uh, guest that you know from Celtic Woman. And then we have another guest. We have Sissy Wellman who starred in The Waltons and My Three Sons, over 40 films and so much more. She's with us on Saturday night. So it's really amazing uh, what we've got going on here with all of you. We toast all of you in style. We always welcome you. We toast our viewers. We welcome you to the Gym Master Show Live. Hope everybody is doing well wherever you are around the world. Our audience is uh, interactive as well. We've got a very special guest who is in Newburyport, Massachusetts. And uh, of course, I'm sure you recognize him from a lot of different productions. 10 years on Days of Our Lives, the beloved soap opera on NBC. Uh, a wonderful actor, director, producer. He's also a teacher as well. He's got a book out. He's got a short film out, another film. We're going to talk about all that. We actually have some uh, trailer clips that we're going to share with you as well. His name is Steve Blackwood, and of course, you know him as uh, Bumbling Bart on Days of Our Lives for so many years, a beloved character. He's going to be with us in just a second. First, we do welcome uh, some of our lovely viewers who do watch all around the world. Tess LaBella, who's another great actress and comedian, voiceover artist, and dear friend of our show. So happy to be here tonight. Hello, Mr. Lovely and Lovely. It's good to see you, Tess, who's watching in Florida. Also in Florida, Mary Bishop. Hello, Jim and Lovely friends. Good to see you, Mary. Welcome to the show. You're all Always here from Canada, from Interkip, Ontario, Canada. Merlin is here. Hello, Jim and Lovities. Good to see you, Merlin from South Africa, one of our regular Lovities as well. Juanita is here. Hello, Jim and Lovity family. We've really created a wonderful family here from the Netherlands, from Holland. Willie is here. She's always with us. Hello, Jim and everyone. Good to see you as well, Willie, and everybody that's watching us from literally all around the world. We welcome all of you and we'll take a look at more of the comments as we uh, go along here on the show. Of course, your friend, George Burns, my sidekick is here with us uh, as well. So he greets you too. I know you guys like when we have our cast of characters. So George is in the house. Everybody's in the house. Keep the comments coming. Very viewer centric and viewer interactive. Our special guest again, is uh, Steve Blackwood. And again, he's a wonderful actor, but what's really cool is he's paying it forward as well as an instructor, as an actor, uh, acting coach, and, and so much more. Got some great photos here. Of course, you remember him from Days of Our Lives. I love this photo too. You may remember some of the other cast members from Days of Our Lives. Yes, right there. Kristen Alfonso played Hope and so many others and wonderful photos. We're going to talk about some of these uh, as we go along here too. Uh, again, he's got a wonderful book 
that uh, is really about his uh, career, but also a lot of it focusing on uh, Days of Our Lives as well. Another great photo here. Again, we will uh, talk about some of these as we go along. He autographs the books too, personally. He's got his wonderful master class called the Steve Blackwood Sessions and some really cool uh, films that we are going to take a look at uh, with the, some clips that we have that uh, Blackwood Productions, which is Steve's company, has generously provided to us here on the show. So thanks for all the comments coming in here. Let's welcome live from Massachusetts, a very special guest, Steve Blackwood. Steve, welcome to the show. It's good to have you with us today. It's good to be here, Jim. Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you. You look good and sound good. And so do you. <laughs> what a Thank wonderful you. intro. Thank you very much. It is my pleasure. My pleasure. we got some lovity coming your way. Juanita in South Africa says, welcome to the show, Steve. Hi, Juanita. Mary in uh, Florida says, welcome, Steve. And Hi, Mary. Uh, Merlin in Canada says, welcome, Steve, to the Lovity Hall. You are now I a, am now a Lovity. <laughs> you're one of our Lovities. That's what it's all about. <laughs> I love it. That's the whole show. That's yeah, it's great. Positive bent. Uh, Ann Wozniak, who's in the Jacksonville, Florida area. Hello, Jim and Lovities. Welcome, Steve, hi, from Ann. a very warm Jacksonville, uh, from yeah. New York City. Hi, Jim, and hi, everyone, from Kathleen Walker. Hey, Kathleen, I lived in New York. You did, of course. Yeah. What part? The city? I lived in the city. I lived on in what used to be Hell's Kitchen. Yes. Just between 9th and 10th. They cleaned it up, but it used to be real bad. It was, yeah, yeah, it really was. From Holland, Willie, she welcomes you. Welcome, Steve, to the Gym Masters show. So Thank Willie's you. welcoming you as well. All yeah. great comments coming in here from, look at all this love coming your way from know, all our, right? our viewers here. <laughs> They're great. Yeah. I'm a lovity. I'm You're a lovity. That's it. We all need more lovity in this world, yeah. don't we, yeah. about now? Oof. Yes. So, um, Quickly, as far as how you first got inspired to become a performer, an entertainer, an actor, Steve, did you come from an acting family? Were there entertainers and performers in the family? How did that acting bug initially bite you? What were some of those early inspirations in your life? Actually, uh, Jim, there were not any inspirations like that. I grew up in Detroit, Michigan. Yeah. And uh, Motown my was a salesman. My mother was a secretary. My friends were all, uh, you know, mechanics or some were musicians. But for the most part, I didn't have any sort of inspiration or any sort of role models to go by. I just knew that uh, once I took my first college acting class and I got applause yeah. for the first time, it was like an addiction. And that's when I knew. Because yeah. I was going to be a I was going to be a journalist, and I took yeah. the class, and I heard the applause, and that was it. That was I it. I read this uh, acting book uh, by Uta Hagen called Respect for Acting, and mm -hmm. I said I got to study with her. Yeah. So then I moved to uh, New York City right after college. None of this was planned, and I certain there certainly weren't any people in show business in in my life, and uh, maybe some of your viewers can relate to that but you got to follow your own uh, different drum, you know? Exactly, exactly. So what were some of those early opportunities for you then in uh, Michigan? Did you uh, start working in plays in school and yeah. maybe in community theater? In, uh, in college at uh, a place called Oakland University. And what's very interesting is that I didn't have a lot of self-esteem in college and they had this big regional theater on campus called Meadowbrook. Yeah. And uh, I just didn't, I never auditioned because I, I, I was too scared. Yeah. So I would do local, I would do college plays, but you know, off, off, off Broadway or in Michigan, off, off Woodward. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, uh, and, and I never did to make a long story short though, years later, after I did days of our lives and all that, I went back to Michigan. I moved back to do, films and move films and and uh and different projects because in michigan we had the film incentives and i and i did a show at meadowbrook called boeing boeing which was the biggest hit they ever had mm -hmm. and i taught at my college when i was anything but a model student i ended up being an adjunct professor at oakland so i did the big show a couple of shows at uh, meadowbrook and i taught at and this is from a kid who you know, was afraid to audition, was afraid to do anything. And so it just shows you, if you keep at it, um, you can come full circle. 
Mm, that's fantastic. Yeah. So when did uh, Hollywood, when did Los Angeles call your name to go out there and say, okay, I'm going to leave, you know, my familiar surroundings of, of Michigan where I grew right. up and I'm going to take my shot out in Los Angeles. When did that happen for you, Steve? Well, I, I, uh, I, I was in New York and I wasn't, I wasn't booking very mm -hmm. much. And, yeah. uh, when you My went wife, to New York, were you looking for Broadway? Were you no, hoping to get into theater? I was study with Uta Hagen and yes, get on Broadway. But um, yeah. I was, you know, I, I, my wife was still pushing me to uh, to do more. To you know, she says, "Well, you always like film and TV, and your end stage isn't working for you here. So why don't you? Why don't we move to uh, to New York?" So we drove. We got married in New Hampshire, and we drove to New York, and that was the honeymoon. <laughs> The drive to New York, and I ended up. Did you drive slow? I mean, the drive to uh, <laughs> L.A. from New York, and uh, I ended up um, doing some bit parts, and finally, uh, and and doing plays. And, and a casting director from Days of Our Lives saw me do a play, and she said, "Oh, uh, I want to, I want you to come on to do three days as this as Bart, the minion to Stefano." Okay. Uh, yeah. And so what happened was in those three days. The, the part ended up being longer. And during that time, it was about two or three weeks, I added a little humor to the yes man, you know, that's all I was supposed to do is, yeah, boss, I'll go kill him. Yeah, boss. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I ended and they I ended up lasting for 10 years mm. on the show doing a kind of bumbling yeah. Peter Sellers take on on a on a minion, on a yeah. yes man. Yeah. To, you know, and so I went from temp to perm. Yeah. <laughs> which is not too shabby, not too shabby. We got a couple of quick photos here there from is. there. Yeah. That's Teo Penglass who played Tony, mm -hmm. who was my boss after uh, Joe. Joe left the show for a while. And that's that's uh, Josh Reynolds, that's Roman. That's me, that's supposed to be Stefano in the chair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's my Halloween shot with Teo. I loved that. He was so great to work with and he loved my comedy. He oh said, yeah, it's okay, Rob, 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 yeah. Rob, Steve. That's all right. And yeah. so you know, he let, he went along with it, and uh, yeah. wonderful actor and the sweetest man in the world. You you were terrific in that role. I've seen it multiple times because uh, in our family's house, Days of Our Lives and Another World were always on. Ah. Those those were the two big ones that were always on, and. Uh -huh. uh, of course, McDonald Carey and yeah. Francis Reed. I mean, these are legendary people that- uh, You know, before. Francis, who played Alice with the donuts, and you guys out there, are Days fans, if you're watching, would know. Yeah. She was on the show the last two, the, her, uh, the last year she was on. I was still, I was just starting, and so we had these big cue cards for her. Yeah. She was like 95 or something she, like that. God bless she her, was, yeah. God bless her. She was a trooper. She yeah. came on and she- she was good, you know, but um, but I, I worked with Francis Reed, the, who was on in 1965. That's how long the show's been on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and McDonald Carey did the voice, Day right. of Our Lives, really. Right. And it's still going. The series is still, it's one of the few left, which is absolutely amazing. People yeah. really have an affinity for it. Did you find that when you took on that character that people still see you as that character. You can do all these other fantastic things, but there's something about those particular fans because those series are on for decades that they get right. so close to the characters, right? Yeah, they do think of me as as Bart. And sometimes in the uh, when you do the fan events with the cast, you know, and the, the wonderful people that you saw, Christian Alfonso and, and, uh, and people like that, and Joe Mascolo, there they are, and Lauren and James, um, they think uh, the Days fans think you're that character, and they get they got mad at me because in one storyline I kidnapped Bo Peter Reckle, right? And they said you, why'd you why'd you kidnap Bo? You're mean, and they get really mad. At me. <laughs> and I said no, that's just a television show. It's just a character I play. But they they're real avid watchers. They really get into the story. They really believe. The characters and well they should i mean you know that that's okay but yeah. um, you know i mean it, it, it they really believe you even off stage they believe that you're that per person i said no i love peter yes, I would never kidnap him. 
<laughs> exactly. Christine Clifton watching in North Carolina says, Steve, welcome to the show tonight. You're now in Lovity. Another hey. great conversation has begun in Lovity Hall and Tesla Bella, who's a wonderful actress, comedian herself, voice artist. Welcome, Steve, to Lovity Hall. She hey, is in, uh, she's in Florida as well. Cool. So, I mean, 10 years on, on one program is, is God bless it. It's doesn't, it's not the norm usually for everyday television series and, and, you know, shows and specials. So to have that role and to, to last that long, extraordinary. And, uh, yeah. what did you learn from that time period on that oh. soap opera? What did it teach you or you learn as a performer doing that? Program. Well, you know, um, they say there's an old adage that 90% of this business uh, is getting along with people. Yes. And so for 10 years, you know, there's a lot of different personalities on a soap opera on any show. Yeah, sure. And so you've got to, you got, you know, no one to, you know, no one to back off and no one to say, you know, I really think this line should be changed. But you, the thing about a soap opera, what's really, what I learned mostly is I, I learned how to, get it done because on a soap yeah i mean we had we literally filmed an entire episode in one day the scripts the morning, are like this thick right and they're, they're that really thick and you and sometimes you get them the night before and you you film you you shoot at what for instance if you shot a uh uh what's the show on now a csi or something like that yeah that yeah. would take a week and a half to film right we filmed an hour show in one day unbelievable and, <laughs> yeah. and so you've got a really you know, prepare, you've got to really know your lines because it's a blown take. Sometimes they'll leave a, a, a blown line in because we got to keep moving. It was always, you know, next, you know, mm -hmm. uh, next set and yeah. uh, moving on. That's what it was. Absolutely. So, and so that, that was the deal. So I learned how to be a professional. I learned to keep working on my role, not to get distracted no matter what. And and do what's best for you know NBC's paying us, and there's a there was a couple of actors I don't want to name names that were, you know, were kind of like uh, they in dry block, which is the, the uh, uh, rehearsal we do in the morning, our movements for the camera later on. They're kind of like phoning it in, or they're, mm. they're their coffee, and they're not really paying attention to where they're going to move. So when we're on the set, and they're you're supposed to move here, they forgot you got to tell them again. Mm. It cost time, and we had to. That was that was trouble. So I, I tried to, I tried to be a professional uh, on and off the set, and I had a good time there. Did you find that you were able to make suggestions with lines and changes? Like, uh, you know, I don't think Bart would necessarily say that line, or maybe if I deliver it this way, did you have that freedom to be able to participate in the uh, production part of it? The greatest thing that I ever had in my life was that they gave me the freedom. Mm. Jim to rewrite the scripts of wow. my part. And I, I, I gave the changes to Teo and Joe Muscola, whoever it was, but I made the character comic and they were writing comedy for me. And some of it was good, but they let me basically carte blanche to change it the way I wanted to. So and to answer your question, uh, I wrote a lot on the show, mm -hmm. you know, I wasn't one of the writers, but for my part, it was a lot. And, and I'm so grateful because they let me do it. I, you know, I mean, it, the, the lines felt comfortable because I, they were my lines. I was rewriting. I said, Bart wouldn't say that. He'd say it like this. Right. And I change it. Yeah. They let me do that. So God bless him. That was great. It's hard to write and do a show a day. These guys, it's like, it's really difficult. So they, they appreciated the help. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Tesla Beller says, love the show and you, Steve, are amazing. I wasn't mad about Bo. <laughs> <laughs> that was you. That was that you was was yelling at me, Tess. <laughs> but, but love is full circle. So she came back. You want her back. <laughs> <laughs> she also says, building relationships. So right, Steve. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. And it's, that, it, that it, it really is because it's a major. I made some contacts and I got while I was on Days, I did uh, a movie called, Ed, I did a few movies. One was called Ed Gein. Yeah. And uh, TV shows like Judging Amy, or I don't know if you have clips of that. Uh, but I did a lot of work. And uh, because of the people, there were some people on Days that knew some people on uh, other shows. And they were really nice. You know, Deidre Hall, who played Marlena. Oh, yeah. I appreciate this. Yeah. Uh, she got to work her own hours. And I, I made her. She was nice enough to let me work 
uh, in the afternoon instead of the morning so I could do the morning to shoot another show the, to do uh, Judging Amy or whatever show it was. That oh, I was yeah. Doing. Yeah. So this was a big star. Yeah. The biggest star on the show. That's right. Marlena. Accommodated yeah. me. Um, and I, I won't forget that kindness. And that that's what it's all about, you know, uh, giving to each other on the set. It really, really is well said. And that's exactly, you know, and it sounds like the set and the atmosphere there was really very familial, family-like. And oh, yeah, you feel like a family. Tesla, oh, right. when not, especially if you're on a show for 10 years, it's yes. like, and so when they killed me off, <laughs> that's what you were going to ask me next. <laughs> it felt to my mother who was watching, it felt like I died. She was crying, yeah. crying. Yeah. And, and I, I was kind of crying too. Yeah, I lost my job. Mm. You know, I was like 10 years on the show and they kill you off. Mm. And it was really a hard scene. And, and you're going to leave your, your family, a family of, yeah. yeah. So yeah. it was really, that was a really, really difficult uh, day. And I ended up, my death scene was I would, I died in Joe's arms and he was crying in Stefano's arms. Mm. And he yeah. was crying and it was an accident. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that was yeah. that was, I think that was in 2008. Yeah. But since then, um, luckily, I've been able to get other work and do other movies like Beyond the Mask with John Reese Davies and other mm -hmm. other other films. And also, I came to Massachusetts. And long story short, yeah. I said, "Well, oh, I'm always hiring out and doing scripts that are good. But what if I wrote my own stuff? What if right. I directed my own stuff? What right. If I locked it in." my own meat pies, if you will. Mm -hmm. That's what happened here. I got, I, you know, I am a, I'm a writer, as you know, and, and, and a direct, and I started directing and I, that was through my acting class because I was directing the students in class and I saw that I had a talent for that. And so that's my master class, by the way, I do once with this COVID's over, we do live sessions in Newburyport, Massachusetts. There it is. And, uh, and also right now I do online classes for 45 minutes, not only with Boston actors, but actors around the country like New York and mm -hmm. LA. So it's great. Chicago. Yeah. It's, it's really wonderful. But, um, the, these, these films that I'm doing now for me are the highlight as, as important as days was. Yeah. Yeah. You know, show a clip of it too. It was yeah. an important thing. Uh, because it's my own product and and it's my own vision. And as much as I want to help other people's vision, it, I'm old enough now. It's like, well, what about my vision? What do I want to write? Yes. So what? What? In fact, I wrote recently wrote a, a script about a, a, a full length about my family and about days and about a, about my acting career. And I and uh, it's called Behind the Scenes. And that's one of the things I want to do after COVID. And also a film noir playlet I did called, uh, which is going to be a small film called short film called private. So I'm, I'm a busy guy. Um, mm -hmm. time, uh, right now meet the author a film we did a couple of years ago and did the festivals is out now on my YouTube channel, Blackwood productions, YouTube channel. And I'm just thrilled yeah. that you're on YouTube, right, Jim? I yes, mean, Jim Masters TV. Yeah, Jim Masters TV, and which yeah. we're on right now. Yeah, and I'm I'm lucky enough where it's kind of it's gone mini viral. Yeah, where it's gotten like almost three thousand hits in about a month. That's fantastic. A, That's on a, fantastic. On a short eighteen minute comedy, Meet the Author, which is about, uh, and I I wrote this based on a wonderful playwright in Newburyport called David Sussman. I mm -hmm. took his one act. And I added some characters. Uh, it's really about a failing romance author who has like one person come to his <laughs> book signing. And, but it's a very special person. And so it's a little rom-com. Mm -hmm. And I hope everybody goes to your channel, Jim Masters, and watches all your shows, which I saw in the Melissa Manchester show, which was wonderful. Thank you. And goes to my channel and watches uh, Meet the Author. And after that, uh, in May, we're gonna we're gonna show we're gonna premiere Stuck, which is another romantic comedy. Yes, um, and that'll be on uh, in May. But right now, we're you know we're just we're 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 just talking about Meet the Author, and it's just going wonderfully. And I'm thrilled. 
And we have the uh, trailer for it. Love to show the trailer for Meet the Author so people can get it a, an understanding of it. It is fantastic. Very well done. Kudos to you. I watched the whole thing. But here's a little clip, folks, for, for just to whet your appetite. And then you can always check it out later. Here is uh, Meet the Author. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. I'm more of what you call a uh, mid-list writer. This the line, I kind of assumed there'd be a line. I know yeah, I'm not I crazy stalker waited. lady, I swear. No, I, I've been blue. In the book world, you strike when the iron is hot. The iron is cold, Marvin. It's unplugged. You couldn't press a hanky with it. We spend money. No one does those love scenes exactly like I write, don't you understand? I don't know how to do anything else. You made me feel so grand. I got to. I once dated a guy who was totally into brewing his own ginger ale. His whole world was a stupid hobby. Who even likes ginger ale? This little scheme, I'm seeming and a dream. They like you, baby. They like you a lot. We're back. True, she meant me for some. Writing is significant, it's not smacking lips. With the fiery passion of a supernova. Yes, as a matter of fact. Fuck you. You're kidding, right? Is that kind of like a deal breaker? For someone exactly like you. Mom is getting hot. Exactly like you. Mom is getting hot. Exactly like you. <laughs> and that's just a little teaser for just a teaser <laughs> and by the way i did i i'm uh, they let me they let me i let me i let me sing uh, the title or the the song there that you were heard, exactly like you and there's another song at the end and yeah. uh, so i sing too so i get to i get to not only write and direct and act in it but i get to put my music on it too so yeah. it's just so great it's like a yeah. my own home movie you it's know. fantastic. And look, uh, Mary Bishop in Florida says, looks great, Steve and Tess LaBella. What a clever, well-done trailer. Awesome, Steve. Bravo. The, yes. they're, they're loving it. They're loving it. So so that's near and dear to your heart, isn't it? That one? Yeah, there, yeah, there really is. These short films are wonderful. And the next the next step is uh, to do a full length. Yeah. Uh, they'll just play about my family and my wife has been saying, you know, you got to write about, I had a, I had kind of a challenging family. Uh, and, uh, and I wrote about them and, and, uh, I, it's a comedy, it's a comedy dramedy, if you will. Yeah. Neil Simon, you know, only a little bit more serious than Neil Simon. And, uh, I'm excited about it, but, uh, it's also helped me because by writing about my crazy family, I, I have more empathy for them. You yes. know, I feel, you know, I, I, uh, I understand their side of the, the issues and, uh, and, and it's really good. And, uh, and this private thing that I wrote, uh, it's about a private eye in Detroit in 1949, who, uh, is trying to crack a case and a lot of secrets are revealed between him. It's kind of like Chinatown. Yeah. Him right. and the, uh, a very mysterious lady. Mm. Um, and, uh, I'm very excited about that too. I'm just deciding which one to do first, but, and this is all through Blackwood Productions. And I, sometimes I hire my students, uh, the redhead that you saw in the trailer, yeah. uh, Marty, who was terrific in the film, Marty Smith, uh, is one of, was one of my students. And so, you know, uh, it gives me great pleasure to hire, hire my students and I'm, I'm, I'm just thrilled, you know? Uh Absolutely. And you give him a, you know, an, a leg up and an opportunity. Um, adjunct professor over the years of theater at Hillsdale College, Oakland University, Michigan, which you mentioned, taught at Endagon College, Boston Casting. I've actually done some commercials and uh, industrials through Boston Casting, University of New Hampshire, Michigan State University as well. Right. So right. you really love teaching, don't you? It's, I do uh, love it's, teaching. And all, yeah. What's interesting in my book, The Steve Blackwood Sessions, which, by the way, 
I've got my own, speaking of my own little business, there it is. So if you were guys were interested in buying this book, I have all my students do it because it has all, everything I learned from Uta Hagen in that about uh, method acting, about personalization. That's about priceless, yeah. Who am I? What do I want? What's my obstacle? What's my physical life in the scene? It's all in the book. Also some stories about days of our lives. And what for what the fans think is the real highlight in the book is that it out actually has my dialogue with the students that I recorded and I put in there. So you'll you'll see, a, you know, for instance, a, a guy did a scene from Prisoner Second Avenue and mm -hmm. I talked to him about uh, about the scene. And you'll you'll see the dialogue in the book, which actors really love. Um, some actors tell me it's their go-to book for auditions and uh, and base camp and being on set. So, and I'm no, you mean uh, Prisoner of Second Avenue, the one with Jack Lemon? The one with Jack Lemon. I actually did. I that love play. that. He yeah, is. Yeah, I know Jack I, Lemon, one of my favorite actors of all mine time. Mine too. Yeah, That's he just. I got into. I mean, comedy is my thing. I got into uh, acting because of Jack Lemon. Yeah. Yeah. Harry Grant. Yeah. Peter Sellers. These guys are are my role models yeah in comedy yeah for me is much much harder to do than drama and crying and all that oh stuff. it is yeah it's all timing it's got to be done precisely if it's just off a hair especially yeah. in a live theater you'll miss the laugh and you know when you, and when you blended neil simon with jack lemon oh my god with the out of towners we just watched that again last weekend the out of towners with sandy dennis oh i and love jack it. lemon uh he yeah. just Sandy yeah. Dennis was one of the teachers at HB Studio. That when That's I studied funny. with Uta Hogg and Sandy was there teaching along with Charles Delson Riley. Oh my God, yeah. Pendleton. So we had Austin a really was a guest on our show in the summertime, Austin Pendleton. Was he really? He, yeah, yeah. He was here. What a talent. He's what amazing. A, yes. Sandy too was uh yeah. just wonderful. Great people. That was at HB Studio HB. on Main Street, mm -hmm. New York City, where you're from you're no, you're in Connecticut. I'm from uh, New York, uh, originally from Long Island, originally. Yeah, out east on the island. Yeah. Well, when I was in New York, all you people, anybody from New York watching the show right now, I, I lived in Hell's Kitchen. I lived on the Upper West Side. I lived in on Long Island City. Mm -hmm. um, so I lived uh, all over the place. And, and I was in Manhattan for 11 years. And uh, uh, I love New York. And yeah. uh, I'm, I can't wait for the city and ever and all of us to, to get back. rebound. Absolutely, um, we, have, we have another photo. You uh, autograph the books as well. I autograph the books, and I send them. See, this is uh, nice. The post office is my my desk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your best I friend. I sign them and I send them out here for fifteen dollars, and and uh, and it's got everything I I know about acting and about days of our lives and and dialogue with the student. It's all. Yeah. It's all in there, and I'd love for you guys, everybody, to get a copy. We have some other wonderful photos. Maybe quickly you can take us through some of these. Uh, this one's terrific. Tell us about this. This is uh, Beyond the Mask. It's uh, it's actually a Christian movie, mm. um, and I played a, uh, you know, one of the Patriots, and, mm -hmm. and uh, you see John Rhys Davies, second from the oh yeah the left, who was in. Um, you know, Raiders of the Lost Ark, and he was in uh, what's the what's the trilogy, Lord of the Rings? Yes, yeah, yeah. John was a sweetheart, and uh, the movie has made a lot of money though, and it was just a ball to work with him and do yeah. a lot of different stunts mm -hmm. in the in the thing. Uh, but this was a, a this was one of the movies I did in New, in uh, Detroit uh, when we had the film incentives. I went back to Detroit. Mm -hmm. you know, and did Meadowbrook and taught at Oakland University as an adjunct in Hillsdale. And we did, I did this movie. I did Machine Gun Preacher. I did a movie called Cedar Rapids with Ed Helms. There it is. And uh, that's Ed, I'm talking to Ed Helms. That's him. You see his profile. And uh, you guys might remember Aaliyah Shellcat from, mm -hmm. uh, uh, what's the show with, with, uh, uh, I'm spacing out here. Yeah, I know what you're thinking of. Yeah. Uh, 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 with Jeff Tambor, who was my teacher in L.A. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, uh, and the guy from Ozark was his big comedy. It's a great yeah. comedy. Yeah. Anyway, she was in it. She was the kid in it, the daughter yeah. in it. And she was great. And we had a great time uh, doing this movie and a few other movies, too. So I'm, 
when I came back to Michigan, it was like mm. Hollywood Midwest. We they were doing. Yeah. I was auditioning three times a day. I was doing movies. I was teaching. Incredible. I didn't. I didn't have time to breathe. You know. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it was. It was just awesome. You know. Tell us a little bit more about the master class because that really sounds exciting. How do people, are there prerequisites? How do you get involved with it? If somebody's watching live right now or they watch this later in our archives on the YouTube channel at Gym Masters TV and they're interested, um, tell us a little bit about it and some of the things that you uh, really get into with the master class. Well, with the master class, when we're live, um, we do two person scenes and monologues. And what we really get into. Uh, in class, in every scene, every monologue we do is is uh, personalization of the role. And most importantly, whenever a scene starts or a monologue starts, do you know what I mean? Yeah. After just, you know, I say, when you're ready, all right, go ahead, you know, and I'll, I'll announce the scene and then they'll get up and they'll just go right into the scene. Yeah. Instead of my question to them, and that's it, this is a, I'm a stickler about this. What just happened before the scene started? Right. What was the first beat of the scene? What did someone say to you? What did someone do to you to make you start talking right now? Because people just start talking because it's like, start, okay. You, you know, Jim starts the line here. And it's like, no, it's like, you don't start the line until you know what somebody just said to you or what somebody did to you. Maybe somebody insulted you or something, and you're, and you take that moment to start the scene, and then you're in. I call it, and this is a monologue too. If you're not in at the top of the scene or monologue, then you're spending the whole rest of the scene and monologue trying to catch up and get into the scene. You got to be in right at the beginning. And I'll tell you something at auditions, um, and I'll, even on the reels that people put together their clips of their thing. The casting people, producers, directors have the attention span of a P, meaning that if you don't get them yeah. in the first 30 seconds or a minute, they're yeah. going to tune out. You're out, right. That's you're it. Out, you're gonna, you know, they're going to tune out. They're going to turn your reel off, your tape off, and you're, they're going to tune right out. So my stickler is uh, personalize the role. What would you do if you were a lawyer in the given circumstances of this summation in the for, for the jury in this seen in this movie what would what would you do not what your image uh or indicate are you you indicating his death an actor indicating i'm a lawyer ladies and gentlemen of the jury yeah. that's yeah. indicating yeah. oh yeah indicating an image a stencil of what a lawyer is no if you were a lawyer speak in your normal voice and what would you do in the given circumstances and in every scene i make them raise the stakes there, there's always you're it's always about something about something important in the scene and you got to have an obstacle for instance in uh you're talking about jack lemon yeah uh, he's trying in the apartment yeah this beautiful movie he's trying to 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 set up dates with his bosses in the apartment well he's got a cold yeah <laughs> you know and so there's a there's the obstacle and the physical life. It's like you're trying to do this, but give yourself something to hurdle to get there. It may, mm -hmm. you know, what makes it much more watchable. Yeah. Yeah. Much more relatable and uh, relatable. not overacting or, or to adding too much gravitas to something that exactly. really doesn't need it. Right. Yeah. Right. You're an actor. You understand this, you know, right. so that's, that's what I teach. And, uh, and I, I'm, I'm sometimes hesitant when my actors, they want to take classes uh, and pay to play. And I don't want to get controversial on your wonderful show here, but uh, they take classes just to be near a casting director or mm -hmm. a director or producer or whatever. And I don't believe in those classes. These people aren't uh, qualified acting teachers. And I say... And also, by the way, and I got to go in a minute here. I hate to go, but um, <laughs> uh, you've got to really know your craft yeah. before you guys. I'm going to look right at you here. Yep. Before you do your your independent movie, before you do your web series, mm -hmm. I see so much stuff on here now, and I see actors that don't 
have a technique. No. And there you are on the internet forever. That's it, right? Yeah. You're not gonna you're not gonna erase that. You might take it off or something, but learn to act first. Learning to act technique is very sexy. And then somehow we were it's like that you're everyone's trying to rush to be the star, be a name before they do the work. Who's the one that said it? Somebody said it to me recently too. Uh, I don't know if it's Jack Lemmon or somebody that said, maybe it was Walter Mather. Somebody said that, you know, like the true test of a great actor is that you're not, it doesn't seem like you're acting. You're just being authentically that individual or, you know, yourself or whatever it is. But a great actor is one that you don't realize they're acting. You're, you're wrapped up with that character because you don't realize that's an actor playing the character. You're so into the character. You, they're, you're, they're, you just said it. You just said it in what you said. They're being. Right. They're not acting. They're right. being. You, they're work, being. you work your butt off on the character. Right. Your backstory. Again, and you, get, you find, you know what they have for breakfast, lunch, mm -hmm. everything. And then you're up on stage, you're on set, and you're being, and you're you're there. You're being. Watch That's Daniel right. Lewis. He is Lincoln. That's right. Exactly. Right. He's, being. he's not acting Lincoln. Right. He's living the God. He's, he's living the thing. Right. Um, you have any other things? Because my we have uh, <laughs> <laughs> dinner is ready, honey. Dinner, uh, yeah. We we have the trailer for Stuck, which we would love. I to would show. love to, to tell love us to, about yeah, that. That's my next movie. It's in festivals and it's coming up. I'd love for you to play it. That would be awesome. Tell us a little. You want to uh, preface it a little bit? Stuck. Yes, I'm there in a minute. This is the land. <laughs> um, a couple try to spice up their sex life. They get a sex machine, and the delivery boy gets stuck in it. <laughs> and the dinner guests are coming over at the same time. Hence the word stuck. Dinner. Hence okay. the word stuck. All right, here it is, folks. And we'll be back for a quick uh, goodbye with our wonderful friend, okay. Steve. And we'll have to have you back, Steve. You know? Yeah, no, I want to come we'll, back. We'll chat a little longer. I'm glad we had this all worked out. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Here's Stuck. Love Trap? So, you're not going to be using it tonight. Yeah, no, I don't think so. This is my last stop, so I have time to set it up for you. No, no! delivery guy stuck in a giant sex contraption in our bedroom. You're not going to have your clients see this. Unconscious or not, we are getting him out of that thing and the hell out of here. Right. 15 minutes, George. Right. Now, slather up. You slather up. No, no, no. Wait, oh, no, wait, Jesus. Look at, Jesus. Look at face. Look at Jesus, face. what is that? How can you be allergic to olive oil? <laughs> How could you be allergic to olive oil? You be allergic to olive oil, Jim. <laughs> yeah. How could you be? <laughs> to it's find out, you'll have to watch that, folks, coming yeah. up. Yeah, that's uh, going to come up on the channel where Meet the Author is, Blackwood Productions YouTube premieres. Um, it'll come up uh, in May 15th that we're going to premiere it after our festival run. So I'm excited about that. Two quickies. Why do you love what you do so much? Because it's so obvious that you do and you pay it forward in, in teaching others. But what is it about this craft that you really love so much that it really speaks to you, Steve? What a great question. Um, I, I can't, I can't, I, I, I love it. I, I don't, you know, it's something I was born to do. You know, it's just, it's like, what I love is that I get to is that I, I I get to do what I love, and I and I and I didn't uh, go in any other route but to do what I you know. So if I have a final message to you guys is like, go where your heart is. The money will come, things will come, or good things will come. Don't do what you don't want to do, and that that goes for acting for anything. Don't do it for the celebrity, for the fame, for the, yeah, got to do it for the love of it because there's uh, so much sacrifice, blood, sweat, and tears, rejection, so many things that are involved in it. Uh, I'll tell you what I, uh, before I go, I'll tell you uh, what I, when I do it, I live for the moment where my character takes off, whether it be on stage or in a film, and 
I don't know what just happened. Do you know what I mean? But it, yeah, yeah. It, my character, it, those moments are rare. It's hard. Yeah. You know, this is hard. Acting's very hard. But when that happens, it's it's magic. Absolutely. And those moments. So that's my answer. And your website is steveblackwood.com. So right. people can check that out and learn right. more about everything we've been talking about. And there's so much more. This was amazing, Steve. And I'm glad, I can't believe, you know, half hour plus just went by. It goes by in a New York minute, but it, it was really a pleasure and an honor to have you with us. And I hope you'll come back. We'll keep the porch light uh, on for you. And I hope the show met whatever expectations you had and that you it enjoyed exceeded, it. It exceeded it. You're a great host and uh, I'm glad appreciate it all that. worked out. I appreciate that. And uh, George sends his best as well. Hey, hi, George. <laughs> That's it. With a cigar and all. With a cigar and all. <laughs> He says Bye, you gotta George. you gotta laugh, right? You gotta, you gotta laugh. laugh. Thank you, Steve. All right, we'll, Jim. We'll Have a great one. Again. Goodbye, Have everybody. You. Goodbye, Take all care. fans. Bye-bye. <laughs> Steve Blackwood, you remember him for 10 years on Days of Our Lives. That's right. Some of you said, uh, what didn't he play Bart? Yes, he played Bart on Days of Our Lives. But as he mentioned, a lot of other incredible things, uh, film and television, so much more. There he is with some of the cast from Days of Our Lives. You recognize the crew there. He mentioned some of the names. Here are some scenes from Days of Our Lives when he played Bart for all those years. And again, he teaches the master class. Um, and he's based in, he's originally from Detroit, of course, lived in New York, lived in LA. Uh, Days of Our Lives is filmed out on the West Coast in Los Angeles. He does the master class, the Steve Blackwood sessions, uh, the book as well, which we talked about, which is a really cool read. And he autographs it as well. The Steve Blackwood sessions talks about the craft, but he also talks about his years uh, all those years on Days of Our Lives on NBC, which is still running on the network. Here's another cool shot as well of Steve. And uh, again, he talked about this with Cedar Rapids. He talked about that as well. Another great shot there as well. Again, just a few quick photos. And you got a chance, if you missed any of the episode and you want to see the film trailers that uh, he shared with us, which are hilarious. You can definitely go back and take a look at those uh, as well. It was really, really fantastic to have him on the show. We were able to, to get him on and uh, yeah, learn a little bit about the man behind the characters too, not just talk about the book or the class or the usual things, but to learn a little bit more. Maybe you know, you've been a fan of his work uh, throughout the years and maybe you've wanted to know a little bit more about what makes the man tick. What are some of his passions? Why does he do what he does and why has he done it for uh, so many years and how is he able to take on these different characters and uh, do it in the way that he does it uh, so well? So Kathleen says, thanks, Steve. Lovity hugs. You're great, Steve. Thanks for a great conversation. Take care. Thanks for your time, Steve. Keep well. I will look for your book from Kathleen and Juanita and Mary and Renee in Iowa as well. Again, uh, actor, director, producer, and teacher and Days of, Alive, Days of Our Lives star, Steve Blackwood, as a very special guest here on the show. You're so right, Tess. Never let them catch you acting. That is exactly what it's all about. We were just talking about that with our friend, uh, Steve Blackwood. Appreciate him joining us uh, live and direct from Massachusetts. Again, we would love it if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV. That's where you'll find all the great episodes of our series. Tomorrow is our, <laughs> we're going to have fun tomorrow. It's our St. Patrick's Day special episode here on the Jim Masters Show Live. We're going to have a good time tomorrow. I invite all of you to join us. Right now we have it scheduled at 8 p.m., but we might actually be doing it earlier. So um, keep watch of the Facebook page, Jib Masters TV and the YouTube channel, because we might actually do it in the afternoon. We may be doing our show in the afternoon so folks around the world can watch, because I know in some of the later time zones internationally, it's kind of late, it's midnight, 1 a.m. So we might actually do it in the afternoon tomorrow. Uh, we're still deciding here at the show. Keep watch of the Jim Masters um, channel, which is Jim Masters TV on Facebook, and also the YouTube channel for any updates to the time. Right now it's scheduled at 8 p.m., but we might be doing it earlier in the afternoon. That's tomorrow, St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day. And um, also I want to let you know, too, 
Uh, beyond that, we have some amazing guests coming up. Thursday, Josh Beresford. He's a wonderful actor. He's going to be with us on uh, Thursday. Brilliant actor and singer, fantastic singer, Owen Dara of Irish Heritage, originally from Cork. He lives in Los Angeles, Cork, Ireland, that is. He lives in Los Angeles. He's going to be here. He's going to perform live on Friday on the Gym Master Show Live, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. On Saturday, from Celtic Woman, dear friend, violinist, Irish fiddler, the one and only Murray Nesbitt is going to be here at 3 p.m. Eastern. Matter of fact, you can see Murray Nesbitt, my dear friend Tim Janis, the wonderful composer and musician, the Harp Twins, who was also a guest on our show. Remember Camille and Kennerly Kit, the Harp Twins? You can see that episode with the Harp Twins on the Gym Masters show live on our YouTube channel at Gym Masters TV. Do you also remember when we had Amir Mugun, the wonderful Irish flautist? She played live for us, live from London. She was on our show, and you can see that episode in the archives at Gym Masters TV. You can also see the previous episode we had with wonderful Mered Nesbitt from Celtic Woman and Celtic Lands, Celtic Heart, Rocktopia, and so much more. Matter of fact, her jewelry line is on uh, JLTV, the jewelry channel now. She also has her own line of violins. She's a dear friend. I've known her for years. I've interviewed her on PBS over the years as well. She's going to be with us this Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, live with me, but we also had her on the show in the summertime. You can see that episode in our archives. And also, Maraid, Amir McGoon, the Harp Twins, and Tim Janis, along with Roma Downey, uh, are going to be on the Today Show with Hoda and Jenna tomorrow on NBC. So uh, we'll be checking that out as well. So Maraid Nesbitt is going to be with us Saturday afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern. And then from the Waltons and My Three Sons and Hollywood veteran and legend, 40 films and so much more, commercials, you name it. Cece Wellman is here. And we're all excited. She's going to be here live from Hollywood. That is going to be on Saturday night. So Saturday, we have a double whammy of Lovity here on the Gym Master Show Live with Maraid Nesbitt at uh, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific. And then Saturday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, Sissy Wellman. Again, many years on the Waltons, as well as My Three Sons, and the list goes on for television. 40 films, countless commercials, and still performing. That's Saturday night. Sunday, Rodney Allen Rippey. Remember him from the Jack in the Box commercials? You see him there? He was a rock star in those Jack in the Box commercials for years. He is a wonderful actor, philanthropist. He's also been a politician. He's a producer, director, and so much more. Um, he's tremendous, lives out in Los Angeles, uh, still very involved in the uh, industry. Uh, he also was on an episode of The Odd Couple and a lot more. He's going to be here live on Sunday, Rodney Allen Rippey. He is a former child star and, of course, brilliant actor, director, producer, and, and so much more. Uh, he's worked on global peace initiatives. We're going to catch up with him on all the amazing things he's doing uh, these days. But again, uh, you may remember him as cute Rodney Allen Rippey in the Jack in the Box commercials for years. Um, one of those child uh, actors that people you know, remember so well because he left a uh, just a wonderful uh, feeling in their heart and people love that character. But Rodney has done, of course, much more, just like um, Steve has beyond Days of Our Lives, Rodney has done much more than just the Jack in the Box commercials. And we'll learn about all of it and catch up with him on Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern and uh, at 4 p.m. Pacific right here as well. We're excited. On Monday, we have a brilliant actress, Emily Ray, that's going to be with us on Monday. And then we also have, Tuesday of next week, we have an extraordinary musician and composer. We have Martha Mook. She is award-winning. She is an electro-acoustic violinist and composer. And she's here on Tuesday of next week. We have so many incredible guests and so many shows coming up here on the Gym Master Show Live in about... Uh, Couple of weeks, Dee Wallace, you know, Hollywood veteran and legend uh, from television, film, stage, and so much more. Dee Wallace, she's going to be with us here on the show as well. So we have so many cool things coming up. Again, keep abreast of our Facebook page, Gym Masters TV. If you haven't liked that page, Gym Masters TV, we would love it and we would love to have you 
uh, with us here on the show. Uh, tomorrow, St. Patrick's Day, St. Patrick's Day. I want to say a very happy birthday to my father, also James Masters. This is his birthday today. Uh, so we wish uh, dad a very, very happy birthday. Love him very much. It's a busy week of birthdays uh, and holiday tradition because my father's birthday is today and St. Patrick's Day is tomorrow and my mother's birthday is next week. So uh, a lot of family birthdays uh, in March. We have a lot in September too. Uh, so happy birthday to one of my executive producers, my father, Jim Masters, Jim Sr., and um, you guys are the best. We love having you here on the Gym Master Show Live. Hope everybody's doing well. Thank you. I appreciate that, Renee. It's a pleasure to have you here. So we're going to wrap up the show. And it was good touching base with everybody. Don't forget, you can find us 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, live here with our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series. Don't forget to smile and share uh, the smile. That's a great contagion. Sharing the smiles. Don't forget to share the levity with the world all around the world. Again, I just said that word by a slip of the tongue when I said light, love, and levity. And I said love and levity too fast. And we came up with levity and you guys fell in love with it. Find your Zen place too. Mine is the ocean. Living here along the northeastern coast of the United States. Uh, swimming, surfing, boogie boarding, sailing it. Love the ocean. Uh, it's a Zen place for me. The number one, of course, is with family and friends. Nothing tops family and friends and time with them. My career in television, radio, stage, multimedia, all these years on air, on camera, behind the scenes also is another Zen place, which I love uh, as well. And we love all of our time with all of you. And as we always say here on the show, don't forget to relax. That's right. Relax. Love one another. Breathe from the diaphragm. It's always a better thing to do. You get a full deep breath. It's good for the soul, uh, mind, body, and spirit. And don't forget to uh, love yourself. Uh, of course, there's times when you need a reminder to love yourself, not in a narcissistic, egotistical way, but in a way that reminds you that you're worthy and uh, you should have self-worth and uh, self-love. That way you can share love with others. So you're uh, always welcome here at the Gym Master Show Live. We've done over 300 episodes of our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series. It's always a blast connecting with all of you. Good night, Karen. And uh, to Karen, we're going to open up this big box that came from Nova Scotia today. It arrived today. I know that took a long time, didn't it? We're going to open that on the show tomorrow, on the St. Patrick's Day episode tomorrow. So good night to Renee and Willie and Christine. Hope to see you all for St. Patrick's Day tomorrow. I know I told everyone yesterday, but I am so grateful and happy today from getting my second Pfizer vaccine today. Good night, all. Lovely. That's fantastic. Good night to you, Christine, and good night, Karen, and good night, Kathleen. Good stuff, good stuff. Your power is going off in two minutes. <laughs> good night to Juanita and Tess. Happy birthday to your dad. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. I really appreciate that. Happy birthday to Mr. Masters. Thank you, Anne. I appreciate that as well. Good night, loveities from Linda and Mary. And happy birthday to Papa Jim. Thank you very much, Willie. Appreciate that. Happy birthday to our dad, Karen. Thank you very much. And Kathleen, thank you. Happy birthday, Mr. Masters. Happy birthday to your dad. Thank you. I appreciate that. Linda and Mary Bishop. Happy birthday to dad Masters. And happy birthday to Jim's dad. Uh, also named James. <laughs> I'm the fifth one. Happy birthday to your dad. Love you guys. This was terrific. Now go play amongst yourselves. Uh, we actually still have something in our glass. It's actually just some ginger ale. Very refreshing. Mm. Oh, great. I'm so happy you got it, Jim. Yeah, we did today. We got it today. It's fantastic. Can't wait. It's a huge box. We didn't shake it. We didn't shake the box, uh, Karen. So thanks for sending whatever's in that box. We're going to tear it open tomorrow. And... Um, it's important to love yourself. Yes, it is. You got your first uh, Moderna vaccine today. How are you doing? Uh, any side effects, uh, Renee? Are you feeling okay? Did you have any side effects uh, when you got the vaccine? Are you feeling any different? I know it really depends on the individual, you know, how we each react to the vaccines, uh, whether it's the first vaccine or perhaps the second vaccine. It really depends. So how are you feeling today having gotten your first dose uh, of the Moderna vaccine today, Renee? Uh, good night to Anne, to see you as well. Doing good, a little sore, good. That's all, that's good. Uh, you hang in there. 
And uh, you're so excited for me to open that big box. It's sitting right over there. It's over there by Lin Lin. Lin Lin is guarding that box. And uh, we'll open that on the show, on the St. Patrick's Day show tomorrow. So again, folks, um, keep watch of our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV, and watch the Facebook page because we might be moving the time of the show up into the afternoon, which I know a lot of people really uh, would probably enjoy. So, uh, and hope you can join us. St. Patrick's Day show will be great. Green, your favorite color too. Green is my favorite color. It sure is. And uh, Amy says, love it. dreams to all. You got it. You got it. You don't have your first vaccine yet. Not yet there in Netherlands, huh? Hopefully uh, you'll get that soon. So glad you're doing well. Just a little sore, but you're not uh, like overly fatigued or any other side effects at the moment. And hopefully it stays that way for you as well. And uh, please do the show earlier. I really want to watch it live. Okay, so maybe we will do it earlier. I'm thinking maybe we might do it around maybe two in the afternoon or three in the afternoon, perhaps. That will give our night, that way our night will be free. Um, what do you think? Maybe we'll do it at 2 p.m. Eastern tomorrow, the St. Patrick's Day uh, Lovety episode, our celebration episode. We're going to have some good time. There's music and uh, some surprises and the traditional Irish dinner and all kinds of cool things. We're going to be celebrating our the Irish part of us as well. Yeah, Lynn Lynn is looking out for us here for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> you have the first choir practice coming up tomorrow night. Yeah, for Easter. Easter is coming up as well. Um, so yeah, keep watch. Uh, we'll post it on the Facebook page uh, today or this evening as far as what time we're going to be doing the St. Patrick's Day show tomorrow, probably in the afternoon um, between maybe maybe around two o'clock at Eastern, maybe three Eastern uh, for an afternoon edition as if we're marching in the parade. There are really no parades for St. Patrick's Day this year. So we'll maybe pretend we're marching in the parade, but we'll have a lot of fun tomorrow in our St. Patrick's Day episode. And then we have so many guests coming up and so many cool things to do. I know you guys want me to strut that wonderful instrument there. I know you guys want me to sing on the show. We have done some singing over the holidays. I really haven't shared as much of that uh, on this show because we're doing more of the hosting and the host chat and uh, inspiring conversations and guest interviews and stuff. But we will start sprinkling that in. And we are working on the Lovety Cruise. I know you guys have been asking about that. 2022, I've been talking to the travel agency who are dear friends of mine. They watch our show all the time. They they see all of you wonderful Loveties. <laughs> so, uh, Joey Lorenzo, hello. Good to see you as well. And hope you're doing well, and and Connor as well, and uh, perfect. Yes, yes. So we'll do it in the afternoon. It's either going to be two p.m. or three p.m. We'll do it. And uh, happy St. Patrick's Day, all. Probably won't be able to make the show. Daytime appointments. Have fun. Good to hear Renee on how you feel. I am okay so far. Mine today just headache. Some people get the headache. Um, hopefully that'll go away quickly. All right, gang. So. Um, we're going to wrap up this episode. Always a pleasure to have you with us in the Gym Master Show Live. We always have all kinds of incredible things for all of you. We'll have some fun tomorrow as well. And that's a wrap. Love you all. Thanks for joining us in this episode of our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series. We appreciate our guest, Steve Blackwood, for joining us as well. And we appreciate all of you joining us here on the Gym Master Show Live. Love it, Cruise. Yes, we're working on that. And uh, we should have some details real soon. And I know you want the Lovety swag. Uh, people have asked for sweatshirts and hats and mugs and all kinds of cool things. So we are doing that. We are doing that. And it's almost done. Almost done. So hang in there. We want to do it right. That's why we haven't rushed that. Uh, have a wonderful St. Patty's Day, you as well. Enjoy Lorenzo. We'll be here with a special episode of our show. Mets opening day, April 8th. We have a virtual orientation next week. I have to see what to say about keeping you safe. Absolutely. Thank you very much as we celebrate my dad's birthday today. My father's favorite color is green as well. And he has always enjoyed his birthday the day before St. Patrick's Day because it's like a double whammy for him. The, the Irish in me is on my father's mother's side of the family. So very, very Irish on that side of the family. Everyone wear green so the leprechauns don't pinch you. LOL. You got that right. <laughs> 
We love you, Yang. Thanks for joining us in this episode of the Gym Masters Show Live. Missed any of them? You can see over 300 of them, 24-7, 365, on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. And uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. We would really love that. Share the channel. Tell everybody you know about our series as we continue to grow it, build it. And uh, it's just really absolutely tremendous. And uh, we just love it. You guys are the best. You take care. You be well. Thanks for joining us in this episode. And we'll see you tomorrow. Again, uh, it's either going to be two, three, maybe four. We'll uh, decide that. And then we'll post it on the YouTube channel and also our Facebook page at Gym Masters TV. All right, Kathleen, keep me posted on our Mets <laughs> and what's going to be happening there. Hopefully, we'll be able to get to a game this year. That would be terrific. And, of course, we'll see you too uh, as well. More comments coming in, smiles and hearts and all kinds of good stuff from everybody. Love you all. Thanks for joining us, gang. We'll see you tomorrow for St. Patrick's Day on the Gym Masters Show Live. Good night. Be well. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Mm -hmm.